Malaya was known for its rich natural resources, and that very aspect was eyed by the Japanese militarists and industrialists. In 1939, Malaya was the resource of 40% of the world's rubber and 60% of the world's tin. That fact alone interested Japanese expansionists, but two additional reasons sealed the approval on the invasion planning that started in early 1941. The first was that most of this rubber and tin supply went to Japan's potential cross-ocean rival, the United States. Secondly, Japan needed oil. Every drop of oil consumed by Japan's military and industrial capacities had to be imported. The Japanese Navy alone needed 400 tons of oil one hour to maintain its war readiness. While Malaya only had a limited amount of oil production, the peninsula was the perfect staging point to launch and support further invasion for the oil-rich islands of Borneo, Java, and Sumatra. In June 1941, Japan was refused supplies of iron and oil from United States, Britain, and Netherlands. Therefore, further reinforced Japanese thought that Southeast Asia must be taken. In addition to the natural resources, Malaya was also part of plan to expand the outer perimeters, so wide that her enemies would not be able to attack by air against the home islands. This perimeter extends from the Curl Islands down to Wake, Guam, the East Indies, Borneo, Malaya, and up to Burma. In general, the Japanese troops knew very little of jungle warfare. Furthermore, Japanese intelligence only detected 30,000 to 50,000 British and Commonwealth troops in Malaya, when in fact there were about 88,600 men. But General Tomoyuki Yamashita would later admit that, our battle in Malaya was successful because we took the enemy lightly. Yamashita was given the overall responsibility of the invasion. On paper, he commanded 25th Army, a force 70,000 strong, organized into three divisions. The defenses in Malaya and Singapore were equally unprepared for war. Indian Three Corps was established and given the mission to defend northern and central Malaya. To do this, it had five Indian infantry brigades. The defense of South was given to 8th Australian Infantry Division. Coordination between the ground troops and the small Royal Air Force contingent in the region was poor, while the ground troops, particularly conscripts from India, lacked training and were not properly equipped. High-ranking British officers, too, lacked training in jungle warfare. While Singapore was boasted to be a fortress that could resist an amphibious invasion, defense against a convention invasion down the Malayan Peninsula was inadequate. The invasion fleet left from the various location on the 4th of December 1941. Although detected by British scout planes two days earlier, bad weather provided stealth for the invasion convoy. On the 8th of December 1941 Japanese launched an amphibious assault at Kota Baru, two hours before attack on Pearl Harbor, US. While other column landed at Singora and Patani, and opposed. The Japanese invasion force meet with heavy resistance from Indian 9th Infantry Division at Kota Baru. Despite the strong defense, the Japanese had three full infantry battalions ashore by mid-morning of the 8th of December. Meanwhile, in Singora, Yamashita negotiated with the Thai government and won an agreement that allowed Japanese troops to move within Thai borders towards Malayo without local resistance. Later, Japanese aircraft began arriving at Songkla in southern Thailand to prepare for air raids against targets in British Malaya, in order to seize air superiority. On the same day, the 8th of December, Japan sent her first air raid on the city of Singapore. The 10th of December, Force Z, the fleet of two warships and four destroyers, sailed up to eastern coast to stop any further landing operations against Malaya. He sailed halfway up the coast when he had heard a report that a Japanese landing at the port of Kuantan was being staged, and turned the fleet towards Kuantan during the night, planning on a dawn attack against the landing ships. At 23.52, Japanese submarine I-58 spotted Force Z and launched the torpedo, but missed. I-58 then reported the finding to 22nd Air Flotilla based at Saigon, and sent 76 aircraft to search for Force Z. As Japanese aircraft of the 22nd Air Flotilla approached, they were surprised to see two capital ships without air cover. 
Little after, 88 Japanese aircraft began the attack on the British ships. The repulse was disabled quickly and sank at 1233, killing 500 men. The Prince of Wales suffered heavy damage and was abandoned at 1300 hours, killing 300 men. Later, Japanese bombers launched the first air raids attack on the Penang Island. On the 10th of December 1941, realizing that the positions at Jitra were still not ready, British commanders dispatched the 1st Battalion of the 14th Punjab Regiment and the 2nd Battalion of the 1st Gurkha Rifles Regiment to Changlin and Asun to delay the Japanese advance until the 12th of December. Contact was made at Changlin at 2100 hours, where two Japanese tanks were destroyed, before the Punjabi troops fell back towards Asun. On the 11th of December, Japanese infantrymen, under the command of Colonel Shizuo Sayeki, overran the defenses set up by the Gurkha at Asun at 1900 hours, and destroyed both battalion, killing or capturing 350 men. The Japanese later reached the outskirts of Jitra, which was defended by troops of the 11th Indian Division. On the 12th of December, Colonel Shizuo Sayeki led elements of the Japanese 5th Division attacked Jitra. After sundown, British General, Lewis Heath, gave the order for the 11th Indian Division to withdraw from Jitra to Gurun. Due to his line of communications were threatened by another Japanese force down the road to Kuro. Battle for Jitra results in a major British defeat, and decides the fate of Northern Malaya. On the 13th of December, Japanese troops arrived at the abandoned airfield at Allah's Star, capturing bombs and aviation fuel. On 14 to the 15th of December, at 1500 hours, Japanese troops overran Allied defenses near Gurun, and later, Japanese captured Gurun, opening up the road towards Penang. On the same day, the British abandoned RAF Butterworth in Penang, flying all of the remaining aircraft to Singapore. On the 15th of December 1941, the British government accepted the Malayan Communist Party's offer to resist Japanese invasion. At the same time, the British freed all left-wing political prisoners with ties to the party. On the 16th of December, European civilians began to evacuate from Penang, while Allied troops destroyed guns, ammunition dumps, and other military facilities to prevent Japanese capture. The radio station and the ships in the harbor, however, were overlooked and would later be pressed into Japanese service. On the 17th of December, British and Indian troops established a defensive line 65 miles south of Penang, near the Pirak River. On the 19th of December, Japanese troops captured Penang on the Malay Peninsula with no resistance, as British forces had already evacuated the island on the previous day. Later, the Japanese troops used the radio station to broadcast the cruel message, Hello, Singapore, this is Penang calling. How do you like our bombing? And proceeded to massacre the Penang residents during a large-scale looting. On the 20th of December, Japanese troops arrived and attempted to flank the Allied positions on the Pirak River, while another column marched along the Greek road. On the 21st of December, having seen previous success with the same tactic on a smaller scale, Japanese launched a large number of rafts down the Pirak River towards Kuala Kangsar, in an attempt to bypass nearby roadblocks. Casualties were heavy, but the Japanese troops were able to establish a bridgehead downstream causing the British to abandon the Pirak River positions, and to fall back towards the Po. On the 26th of December, Anglo-Indian and Japanese troops clashed at Kemer, north of the Po. Later in the day, the Allies withdrew from the Po and fell back to Kampar, which steep hills offered a strong natural defensive position. On the 30th of December, 8,000 troops of the 9th Brigade of the Japanese 5th Division launched probing attacks on Kampar. On the east coast, Japanese troops attacked the defensive positions north of the Kuantan River, whose defenders were confused by inaccurate intelligence that the Japanese were to land from the sea behind them. Later, the Indian 9th Division fell back to the south side of the Kuantan River. On the 1st of January, Japanese troops continued the assault on Kampar, with both sides incurred heavy casualties in the morning. Realized that the British position at Kampar was too strong, General Yamashita ordered landings on the west coast south of Kampar, near the 12th Brigade positions at Talak Anson, in order to outflank and cut off the line of retreat of the 11th Division. 
attacked the 11th Infantry Regiment which landed at Huta and Melintang, and attacked Lokansen from the south. Later, the Japanese 4th Imperial Guard Regiment sailed down the Perak River to reinforce the attack. The landings were successful, and Tulak Anson was taken after a brisk battle on the 2nd of January. With 11th Division line of retreat threatened, British commander ordered the positions at Gampar to be abandoned. The 12th Brigade covered the retreat of 11th Division, and the British pulled back to the next prepared defensive position at Slim River. On the 3rd of January, near Kuantan, Japanese made a furious attack on the British defense and a strong Japanese force penetrated the position. This forced 9th Division to retreat it further south. As the result, Japanese crossed the Kuantan River, capturing the airfield nearby. On the 5th of January, Japanese troops launched probing attacks at the defenses manned by Indian troops at Trolik. 60 Japanese were killed without achieving success. On the 7th of January, the Japanese used surprise and tanks to devastating effect in a risky night attack, in which two Indian brigades of 11th Division were practically annihilated. Later, the Japanese secure Slim River, and British withdrew to Kuala Lumpur. On the 11th of January, tanks reached the edge of Kuala Lumpur, and had taken the capital city with relatively little difficulty. In the city, Yamashita found stores of food, fuel, and ammunition, solving his previously stressful situation of a long supply line from Siam and northern coasts of Malaya. On the 7th of January, Australian General Gordon Bennett began to draw plans for the defense of Johor. A new line was formed with the 9th Indian Division and the rest of the 8th Australian Divisions, the latter of which was already positioned in Johor to hold along the Muar River on the western coast, while the remnants of three corps defended the eastern coast at Mersing. The plan purpose is to holding the Japanese in northern Johor province until reinforcements could be mustered on Singapore Island, which would not be before the middle of February, for an allied counter-attack against Yamashita's forces on the peninsula. On the 11th of January, Japanese troops on bicycles, supported by tanks, crossed the Jmenche Bridge over the Kalam River at 1600 hours into an Australian ambush, killing somewhere between 140 and 700 Japanese troops, while losing only one killed and six captured. Later, the Japanese would return after dark to successfully secure and repair the bridge. On the 15th of January, Japanese launched subsequent attacks and flanking maneuvers, forced the Australians to fall back to the Jamas River. Elsewhere, after the capture of Malacca, on the 16th of January, the 4th and 5th Japanese Imperial Guards regiments crossed the Muar River in force, one few miles upstream of the Indians' 45th Brigade, and established a roadblock. Yamashita had just turned Bennett's left flank, and when the 45th Indian Brigade began its withdrawal, Australian force was in danger of becoming surrounded. On the afternoon of the 18th of January, the British now knew that the entire Imperial Guards Division was in the Muar area, while the Japanese 5th Division was on the main road heading south. On the 19th of January, Australian 8th Division withdrew from Dimas to see the mat, to prevent being cut off by a Japanese flanking maneuver. In fact, the depleted 45th Indian Brigade had held up the Imperial Guards long enough to save the Australian from encirclement. After the Battle of the Muar, 45th Indian Brigade ceased to exist. On the 20th of January, the Indian and Australian retreat from Bakri and was cut off by the Japanese. On eastern coast, 18th Division capture and down, but lacked the strength to break through the Australian defenses at Mercy. An amphibious landing were planned and down by the Japanese. On the 21st of January, the retreat of Indian and Australian troops from Bakri was blocked at the Parrot Salong Bridge at 9.30. Then, two RAF Albuquerque aircraft from Singapore attacked the Japanese positions at the Parrot Salong Bridge in Malaya in an attempt to relieve the Indian and Australian troops being blocked there. Failing to break through the Japanese lines, the Allied troops decided to break up to small groups and take the risk of fleeing through the jungle. But, 110 Australian and 40 Indian was captured, and troops were executed by the Japanese by machine gunning, bayoneting, 
beheading, and burning in the event known as Parrot Selong Massacre. On the 25th of January 1942, troops of the Japanese Imperial Guard captured Badu Pahat. On the East Coast, at 1100 hours, Japanese 18th Division landed at Endau. At 1500 hours, RAF biplane aircraft attacked the Endau landing force, causing little damage and losing five Wildebeest aircraft. At 1630 hours, destroyers HMS The Knit and HMAS Vampire departed Singapore to attack the Japanese ships at Endau. Finally, at 1730, another air attack was conducted by nine Wildebeest and three Albuquerque aircraft, escorted by some Hurricane fighters. This attack also achieved little, and nine aircraft were lost. On the 27th of January 1942 at 0318 hours, destroyers HMS The Knit and HMAS Vampire engaged Japanese cruiser Sendai and six destroyers, which were protecting the troop transports that the two Allied destroyers were aiming to sink. In the ensuing Battle of Endau, Japanese troop transports, Kansai and King Bear Maru, were damaged. While at 400 hours, HMS Thanit was sunk. 38 were killed, 67 survived and were rescued by friendly forces, and 31 survived were captured by the Japanese. However, the Japanese were able to finish landing their troops, which may have contributed to the impression of significant forces in front of the Australian defenders and their subsequent withdrawal. Aftermath of Endau Battle, Percival ordered a retreat of its troops across the Johor Strait to the island of Singapore. On the 30th of January 1942, British troops in the southern tip of British Malaya completed the withdrawn to Singapore, thus marking the start of the Siege of Singapore. By dawn of the 31st of January 1942, the main causeway linking Singapore and British Malaya was blown up. Shortly after, Japanese troops captured Johor Bahru, On the 1st of February 1942, Japanese troops pausing for the following few days to prepare for a landing on the island. Meanwhile, General Arthur Percival announced that the Battle of Malaya has come to an end and the Battle of Singapore has started. Today, we stand beleaguered in our island fortress. Our task is to hold this fortress until help can come. At the conclusion of the Japanese campaign at Malaya, all Allied troops at the peninsula, numbered at over 138,000 were killed or captured. Many of the captured would endure a four-year-long brutal captivity as forced labor in Indochina. On the 18th of October 1943, four northernmost Malay states were transferred to Thailand as a reward for entering into a military alliance with the Japanese. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill considered the British defeat at Malaya and Singapore one of the most humiliating British defeats of all time. <laughs>